All right, stop cutting your wires super short at electrical boxes. You can't do anything when you're over here cutting all your wires off and they're this long and we go to put a switch in. What am I supposed to do with that? Oh, that pisses electricians off. So there's actually a code for this. There's actually rules for how short you can put conductors. Some people, I seriously, like I've had homeowners that have wired stuff like this. And then you go in and you try to bend hooks and it's like, I can't get in. You know, you've got drywall up here. You might have a cabinet in front of you. You might have all kinds of stuff. How am I supposed to strip this stuff out and work on it? Stop doing this. So what does code actually say about it? All right, so if we open up our code books, we've got 300.14. It says length of free conductors at outlets, junctions, and switch points. It says at least six inches of free conductor measured from the point in the box where it emerges from its raceway or cable sheath. So six inches from the back of the box where it emerges into the box. Shall be left at each outlet, junction, and switch point for splices or the connection of luminaires or devices. So this is the same thing for outlet boxes lighting outlet boxes. So when we say outlet, we're not talking about receptacle. The receptacle is the part that you install here to plug into. This is just an outlet. It's a place where you can take power out from. Uh, it is outletting power. Where the opening to an outlet junction or switch point is less than eight inches in any dimension, each conductor shall be long enough to extend at least three inches from the outside of the opening. So even if you have some more shallow boxes or deep boxes, if there's not eight inches in any dimension for you to be able to stick your hand inside to work on that, then you have to be three inches outside of this. So a lot of places where you're gonna see this come into play, this whole three inch thing, is when we start twisting our grounds together. So when we are starting to make ready a device, or some of us call it ripping out because you're ripping the sheathing off of the wires and you're getting everything tied together and pushing in the box, so that they can put drywall and then you come in and put devices later. When we're doing that, we're gonna twist these grounds together. Some people you know, do it a dozen different ways, but if you use, uh, let's say like a green wire nut, you can actually cut these right here, cut one of them off, and now you only have one wire to put on your, your device, on your device screw. But this conductor that I just cut right here is now really short, so is that okay to do or not? Well, we just said we have to be three inches from the front of the box, right? So if I go right here, oh shit, it's three inches exactly. Well, I mean, I guess if I stretched it a little bit, it's like two and seven eighths. So technically that wouldn't be code. I would have to have that conductor three inches. So always be really careful when you're doing this. You gotta make sure when this thing is fully extended out that you've got three inches of conductor to work with if you have a box that's less than eight inches in any dimension. Otherwise, the typical rule of thumb is all of these rest of these conductors, we just need to be six inches from the back of the box where it emerges from a sheath. So usually how I get my depth is I will take my finger, if it's coming from the top, and I'll push this all the way back in the back of that box down at the bottom. Then I'll take it with my fingers and I'll roll it up to accordion at one time up into the top of the box. And then right where it meets down at the bottom, that's where I'm gonna cut it. So I know that this will fold in there perfectly. And when I take that out, I know that I've got more than six inches. It's probably gonna be about six inches from the front of the box. Actually, it's more than that. Seven inches from the front of the box, a little over 10 inches to the back of the box. So you know that that's enough. You don't have to do more. You don't have to leave these things a foot long. Again, it kind of helps when you're doing multi-gang switches things where you're gonna have to have like uh, pigtails or if you've got like Lutron devices or you've got any kind of lighting control, uh, radio raw, stuff like that where you're gonna need a pigtail, a neutral on, things like that. You just have to be mindful of how short you're cutting everything in the back of the box. The reason that this is such a big deal is because when we go in to work on stuff and we can't get inside of here, there might be like a cabinet or a countertop in here and there might be one up here and we might be like stuck next to a fridge or something and we can't do anything with these short wires. We can't install a switch if you leave everything short. Like there, you can't even like pull something out to put a device on it. So um, just make sure any of you non-electricians as well, any of you like handymen, handywomen, 
DIY electrical people. It shouldn't be DIY and shit in the electrical field, in my opinion. I know you're gonna do it anyways, but just make sure that you're following code with the work that you do and don't sh cut the wires off. I know some people are like, oh, well, I wanna recycle, you know, like every little bit. You recycle one little piece of wire and you're gonna get like a tenth of a cent, maybe. If anything, it's okay to, to go overboard and leave a little bit more conductor inside of the box. Um, what the problem is with that though, is it tends to get in the way. So when you have like large GFCI devices or things like that that you're putting in, USB receptacles, things, especially like GFCIs with USB receptacles, radio raw, uh, dimmers, things like that, you wanna have as much space in this box as possible. So there's kind of a happy line. That's why I think going with this whole like fold it down, fold it up, fold it in thing is the best length. Um, another kind of tip is you don't have to use red wire nuts for number 12. There's white or gray wire nuts you could use. You could use yellow wire nuts and the smaller wire nuts that you use when you're starting to put bigger devices in, they actually save you a lot of space. So the reds are just kind of oversized. You don't really need to use those. Now, if you'd like to watch a video on how I actually rip out all of these and get them prepped for a switch from beginning to end, I've got a great video right here. If you wanna watch the same exact thing just for receptacles, I've got another video here where I get everything ready folded in the box and that way it's ready for when we come back to trim out the devices. So, hope that helps in all of your endeavors. Love you crazy people. See you in the next one.